Hello, everyone. Um, my name's Jamie, um, and uh, myself and Shannon are part of the Xanthomenus arm of the um, BPD uh, initiative. And um, we are both um, fairly new, uh, having started at the beginning of February, and uh, so uh, we'll be in giving a whistle stop introduction to the um, Xanthomonas um, genus of plant pathogens. Um, so, a br very brief introduction. Um, Xanthomonas was first described in um, 1921 as gram negative gamma proteobacteria. Um, as you can see in the top corner here, um, they're rod shaped um, with uh, one polar flagellum. Uh, so there are 35 described, at least 35 described species of Xanthomonas. As we'll discuss uh, uh, in a moment, the um, taxonomy and classification is a little bit in flux, um, as it always is. Um, but, um, what you can see, uh, these 35 species have been known to infect over 400 plant hosts, um, including cereals, vegetables, ornamentals, and trees. And there are some examples here. You can see Xanthomonas infection of uh, rice by um, Xanthomonas oryzae, Xanthomonas infection of banana plants, uh, Xanthomonas um, infection of citrus plants, uh, mango fruits, and um, uh, tomato uh, here. And then, um, of course, the um, very famous um, Xanthomonas campestris infection of brassicas um, in the bottom corner there. Um, Xanthomonas uh, infection causes huge and significant um, agricultural um, problems globally. Um, in uh, high income countries, this causes uh, large amounts of economic losses. And um, in uh, lower income countries, this can be even uh, more serious because um, Xanthomonas, uh, sorry, uh, the host plants will be used to, uh, will be grown for both cash and subsistence purposes. So it can cause really serious uh, implications. Um, Xanthomonas um, pathogens are generally thought to be seed spread and they have, um, they, they generally have the, um, uh, they then produce this um, signature yellow uh, exopolysaccharide called Xanthomonadin. Uh, so a brief introduction to the diversity uh, within the Xanthomonas um, genus. Uh, you can see here, as I said, there are about 35 um, Xanthomonas species being described and the nomenclature um, is normally uh, associated with the first host plant that they were identified upon, which can often be quite confusing. Um, and th then uh, a number of the um, species also have um, subspecies pathovars, which um, have um, varying host ranges and things like that, which we'll discuss uh, in a little bit later on. So you can see um, here you've got the, there's a diverse, diversity of host um, plant for xanthomonas can include um, carrots, um, rice, uh, citrus fruits, um, tomatoes and peppers, um, brassicas. Again, this is a, this will be a recurring theme is the famous xanthomonas campestris. Um, and then uh, you've got um, barley and this um, cheerful uh, poo looking fellow here is, um, uh, is a cassava root. And so there's a, a massive diversity of, um, in uh, of hosts for xanthomonads. Now, uh, the, as I say, the classification is um, evolving, uh, to put it um, mildly. There, it, there's, um, uh, yes, so um, there's, uh, uh, in, as we enter the genomic age, the um, classifications of a number of xanthomonads have been, have changed from, um, uh, have, have moved from under one species to a, a number of separate species because, as I said, they were the nomenclature and classification was based on host plant. And of course, um, as we um, got the genome sequences, these uh, then proved to be different species. And so um, they were reclassified, which is part of what this um, project is going to be looking at. We're going to be sequencing about uh, up to a thousand um, uh, Xanthomonas genomes, and her, so hopefully we can contribute to the reclassification and confirmation of these uh, this taxonomy. Um, there's, uh, as I say, there's subspecies pathovars, which are also uh, very important, um, and they can be very different both um, genomically and biologically. Uh, they are, so for ex we'll take this Xanthomonas campestris as an example, and um, the, uh, the initially it was thought to have hundreds of um, uh, pathovars. This then got reduced as we wandered into the genomic age to about six and very recently has been pro proposed to be reduced to just three. Xanthomonas campestris campestris, Xanthomonas campestris raffini and Xanthomonas campestris incani, which um, um, all have different um, different host ranges. Um, and indeed, so, so Xanthomonas campestris has got a very uh, relatively narrow host range, raffini has got a relatively wide host range um, and there's different um, 
infection and colonization strategies. Um, so for example, uh, Xanthomeres campestris uh, is hydrothode infecting vascular pathogen, um, Raphni being uh, a, a, infects the apoplast through the stoma. And um, hopefully uh, the comparison of the different, um, these different pathophiles at a genomic level will identify, help us identify genomic features responsible for lifestyle and um, virulence components uh, observed in these pathophiles. Uh, a very brief introduction to Xanthomonas genomics, uh, started off in 2002 with the uh, publication and comparison of two Xanthomonas um, pathogens, Citri and um, Campestris. Since then, another uh, up to 1,400 um, further Xanthomonas uh, genomes become available. Uh, each Xanthomonas um, species has approximately a five megabase genome, uh, lots of genes, high GC content, and um, variable plasmid repertoire, uh, depending on species. And there's uh, the, a, a wide variety of pathogenicity factors are displayed across the um, genus uh, with um, all known secretion systems represented, uh, variable lipopolysaccharide cluster, xanthan gum production cluster, lots and lots and lots of different ones. Um, uh, particularly uh, interesting are the tal effectors, which are transcription activator-like effectors, which are very interesting and um, we'll be looking into later on. Um, uh, this is just a, a brief slide to um, show the uh, variety of um, how, how a variety of pathogenicity factors represented within the genus. This is just the type, this is just the secretion systems. As you can see, they're very variable across all of the different, um, all of the different species. And uh, this, is in, this is interesting to look into and we'll be uh, looking into it using our, uh, the genome resources that um, we're creating. Um, another, uh, uh, another um, interesting point is the, um, host specificity, which uh, can in, in part be governed by um, the type three secretion system effectors. So this is um, taken from a, a paper comparing three bean pathogens um, in Xanthomonas. Uh, and as you can see, they're quite, quite this, is a sub, uh, this is basically a subtree of the earlier tree we were looking at, but the, you can see the, these three pathogens are still fairly um, distinct. Uh, and yet uh, they, they're all pathogens of different sorts of bean. And you can see the type three secretion system repertoire here. Uh, there's a, a core um, secretome here for the for all of which are represented in all of them, which could be taken as a uh, necessary for um, infecting bean. But then you've got the um, variable se section, which is um, responsible for the host specificity on the different sorts of bean, which is um, which we'll be also be looking into. Uh, the, this in, this is interesting. This is a, a schematic of the type 3 secretion system which was um, published in a recent paper and it was used uh, this was introduced into a non-pathogenic strain of xanthomonas and which then um, was shown to be pathogenic which uh, which demonstrates that the type 3 secretion system can be very important in pathogenicity in xanthomonas i'm very aware that i'm going way over time so i'm going to skip through that slide and then this is the future work this is the work package one which i'm um, specifically um, involved in uh, and we're hopefully going to be using the uh, genomic resources and comparative genomics to answer these sort of questions and now I will um, pass you on to Shannon who will continue and be far more interesting than me I expect. Uh, stop. Thank you Jamie. Stop. No problem let me uh, just uh, am I done? Let me see if I can share my screen now. Am I stopped? You are, yeah, you are. Fantastic. Let's have a look. Okay. Is that sharing? Yeah, everyone? That's sharing. Okay, great. Hello, everyone. Um, so my name is Shannon Greer, and I'm also a postdoc on the Xanthomonas Threats Project, like Jamie. Um, I'm based at the University of Warwick, um, and I'm fresh off a PhD, which was actually in the field of plant virology. Uh, so I'm quite excited to be um, broadening my skill set and um, working with bacterial pathogen. And I'm looking forward to um, applying some of my skills in resistance gene mapping and um, host brassica genetics uh, to this project. Uh, so you've heard from Jamie a little bit about the uh, bacterial side of things. So now I'd like to focus on uh, the plant side of things. So the hosts of Xanthomonas. 
so I thought I'd kick off by going through some diseases caused by Xanthomonas species that will be addressed in our project, uh, starting with our model hosts, which are brassicas. Uh, so brassicas are a, div a diverse genus. Um, many species are cultivated. Um, so you have your raw seed brassicas, which include things like your raw seed rape. And then you have your vegetable brassicas, which are things like your um, cabbage, broccoli, um, cauliflower, kale, just to name a few. And in the UK, uh, vegetable brassica production is a big one. It accounts for a quarter of the total field vegetable production in the UK. And as uh, Jamie mentioned, Xanthomonas campestris campestris um, causes black rot in brassicas. And it's the most important disease of brassicas worldwide, causing losses of up to 50%. And this is a, a cabbage um, on the left, um, it's pretty grotty looking, showing symptoms of black rot. Um, it has these typical V-shaped lesions that start from the peripheral of the leaf and, uh, and grow um, inwards towards the central vein. Um, so this will be our model host pathogen system, uh, but our project will also look at some uh, future um, emerging and potential uh, threats to UK agriculture and ornamental production. Uh, so these include some other pathovars of Xanthomonas campestris, as Jamie mentioned, these are Raphani and Incarnae, which cause um, disease in brassicaceous ornamentals like uh, wallflower and garden stocks. We'll also look at uh, Xanthomonas disease of watercress um, caused by Xanthomonas nostorti. And Xanthomonas nostorti is a newly classified species identified at the University of Warwick. And um, many people, including myself, when you first think of watercress, you think, well, why? Uh, but it's actually a really high value crop um, in the UK. We're home to the watercress capital of the world. And we even have a railway line named after it that runs from Hampshire to London. Uh, so we'll also look at emerging disease of strawberry caused by Xanthomonas. So uh, there's been a huge boom in strawberry production in the UK over the last 20 years. Um, it's currently has a uh, market value of £283 million a year. And Xanthomonas fragariae and Xanthomonas arboricola fragariae uh, cause leaf spot and blight in strawberry. And these are present in the UK, um, but are not currently a threat, but have the potential to be. And lastly, we'll look at um, an emerging disease of maize, um, which is leaf streak disease caused by Xanthomonas basicola vasculorum. And this isn't present in the UK, but it has the potential to be a future threat to uh, our maize production and other monocrots. Um, and it's a, a, a big problem in the US. It arrived in 2015, and since then it's reached epidemic proportions there uh, with losses of over 20% reported. Um, so, as I say, these are some of the diseases that we'll look into, but um, there'll be a main focus of Xanthomonas uh, campestris campestris in Brassica. So, how are um, Xanthomonas, um, how is Xanthomonas transmitted? Well, I don't know if you can see my um, pointer. But if not, if we start um, in the center of the cycle, if we have an infected leaf with these classical V-shaped lesions, um, the bacteria Xanthomonas can spread to new hosts through dispersal by wind, rain, and water, where it enters the new host through the hydrothodes or wounds or the root. And actually, um, Xanthomonas um, can survive in leaf debris for, for up to two years. Um, so that's another route of infection to new hosts. But also Xanthomonas can um, cause this systemic infection of the plants and move to the seed producing tissue. Um, so you can have infected seeds, which then um, go on to um, be new hosts for, for the disease. So how do we control Xanthomonas diseases? Um, well, we can use chemical and antibiotic applications, um, but with the increasing problem of antibiotic resistances, we don't really want to be applying these to our field vegetables. And they only have limited effects, so they can um, minimize infection, but they can't prevent it. Uh, we can use good farm practices such as sanitization of seeds and farming equipment, um, using watering regimes that reduce um, splash um, and also reducing crop density. 
We can use biocontrol methods like competitive attenuated strains uh, that outcompete the pathogenic strains, bacteriophages, um, and beneficial fungi like trichoderma, which have been shown to um, cause this induced um, systemic um, immunity. And then we can deploy resistant cultivars. Um, so this last one is one of the um, main areas that I will be working on. So we have a really excellent resource at the University of Warwick. Uh, we have a genetic resources unit, which is a seed bank, and we have over um, 6,000 brassica accessions. And um, we can screen these accessions for uh, resistance to Xanthomonas campestris campestris, the causal agent of black rot. But obviously 6,000 accessions is um, a huge amount um, to, to screen that in 10 years, you'd be lucky, let alone a, a three year project. Um, so we're quite um, lucky in that we have what's called these diversity fixed foundation sets. And these are subsets of um, brassica plants of belonging to different species that capture the um, overall genetic diversity in these 6,000 accessions in a smaller um, subset of 200 plants that we can easily screen for resistance. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Um, we're screening them for resistance to the most pathogenic races of Xanthomonas campestris campestris, which are one, four, five, and six. Um, and this is me and Joanna screening in the glass house some of these uh, diversity sets um, on, on the right. And on the left here, we have um, a, a napus, brassica napus lead um, showing symptoms of um, Xanthomonas black rot. Um, after inoculation, you can see the inoculation points around the edge of the leaves. And uh, yeah, I would just like to finish there with the team. So we have David and Jamie at Exeter, Joanna and Julian at Ferrer, and then Murray Vardis, Rana and myself at Warwick.